Hello, this is Roger Peterson with a Costa Rica residency update video. Now, the Costa Rican government has implemented the long-awaited regulations to the law to attract investors and retirees to Costa Rica. Just a little bit of background on how we got to this point uh, with these new regulations. And if you may recall, or if you're new to the channel, in 2021, the Costa Rican legislature passed a law aimed at attracting investors and retirees to Costa Rica. Now, to actually implement that law, it required the executive branch to issue the regulations to that law. Now, these regulations have finally been published, and they were published on February 23rd of 2023. This means that applicants for these residency categories can now apply under these provisions and request the exemptions provided in the law. Now, the incentives that are being provided by the law are, number one, that you can import your reasonable and proportional household items free of any import duties. Number two, you can import up to two either car, boat, or aircraft without paying the import duties. And you can combine, so you can import one car and one boat, or two cars, so you can mix and match. Number three, you get a 20% discount on the property transfer tax when you purchase real estate in Costa Rica. And number four, for the investor residency category, the investment requirement has been reduced to $150,000. So let's continue and break down these regulations for you in more detail. Now in the video description, I'm gonna include a link to my article on this topic as well. And in that article, I have provided the full text of the regulations for you in English. So the first question that's probably on many of your minds is, how do I apply for these exemptions? Okay, so let's take a look at that. The regulations require that once your residency is approved, that you can request the tax exemptions to the Ministry of the Treasury. Now to do so, the regulations indicate that the resolution issued by the Department of Immigration granting you your residency status is what will be the basis to send over to the Ministry of Treasury to then apply for the tax exemptions and therefore to be able to import your household goods and uh, or as to the property transfer tax discount of 20%, it's not clear how they're gonna apply that. Since the investment first has to be made in order for you to get a resolution from the Department of Immigration granting you the status, uh, which means you would have already had to purchase the property and pay the transfer tax. So we will monitor this to see how it actually will play out in practice. Now, regarding the household goods and vehicle exemptions, I would recommend that you get a local customs broker in Costa Rica to work with you on those exemptions because processing is gonna involve the Department of the Treasury and the Customs Department, and it all has to be done through their online portal uh, with the tax department called Exonet. I'm gonna go ahead and include a link in the description for you, but it's probably gonna require uh, somebody that deals day in and day out with processing those exemptions to guide you through that process. The next question I wanna answer is, how long do you have to apply for these uh, incentives and tax exemptions? Now, according to the law, these incentives are available for a five-year period of time from the date the law was published, which was July 14, 2021, so that takes us to July of 2026. Now, another important point is that these exemptions are granted for a 10-year period. This means that you cannot sell to third parties the items you imported uh, duty-free. If you do so, they're going to be subject to the payment of taxes. Um, the law does have a process uh, to replace items that were either destroyed due to an accident or theft and things like that. Now, the residency categories that can claim the benefits and tax exemptions under this law is that, you know, this law and the regulations are open to residencies under the rentista, pensionado, retiree, or the investor uh, status. Now, it's important to point out that the requirements for pensionado, retiree, and for rentista remain exactly the same as they have been for many years. In other words, pensionados qualify with a U.S. $1,000 per month lifetime pension, and rentistas will continue to qualify with a U.S. $2,500 monthly investment income. Now, the investor status was the one that was modified, and it was reduced, so the investment that qualifies now is U.S. $150,000 investment. Now, for those of you considering investor residency, uh, the regulations are a bit more detailed as to what they consider to be a valid investment for residency purposes under this category. So let's take a little bit uh, and break these down for you now. The first category falls under real estate or other titled assets. 
This means that you can apply for investor status by investing in real estate or other type of titled assets. Titled means that they have to be recorded in the recording office. And these regulations are now requiring that they be titled in your personal name, in the name of the applicant that's applying for investor status. The applicant is going to have to prove by way of a title certification issued by the recording office that the assets are titled to their name. Now, this is a departure from past practices where they would allow you to uh, title your assets in the name of a Costa Rican company, and then you would show them that you were the sole shareholder of that company, which uh, takes us to the next category, which is that they will allow you to invest into shares of a Costa Rican company, but only if that company is a fully active company that's carry on an economic activity. So what we were doing in the past, for example, was the holding company would hold the real estate. That's no longer going to be allowed. That has to be in your personal name. But if the company that you're going to invest in does have a economic activity and it's registered with the tax department, they will allow you to invest into the shares of those type of companies. The other types of investments they'll allow you to make are in negotiable instruments. Um, however, they have to be through a licensed and regulated Costa Rican brokerage company. Uh, projects which are deemed of national interest or productive projects, but you're going to have to document that by way of some government agency that's going to certify that, yes, these projects are of national interest or productive projects. You can invest in uh, investment funds, but again, they have to also be regulated uh, and registered as fund managers with the regulatory agency. And finally, you can also invest in tourism infrastructure capital. Now, this is going to require prior approval by the Costa Rican Tourism Institute to certify in a technical manner that, in fact, the investment is in tourism infrastructure. Those are the major changes to the investor category. Next, let's touch a little bit on the flow of the application process. Now, of interest to everybody watching here is going to be Article 3 of the regulations, which indicates that applications for investor rentista and pensionados is going to be processed in a preferential manner through the digital platform established by the Department of Immigration. Now currently immigration has extensive delays and processing of these categories can vary in approval times from 4 to 12 months. So it seems the idea behind these regulations is to get the status approved within three months. Now, don't get excited yet. Let's wait and see uh, when they're going to get that digital platform to actually work in such a manner to streamline that approval process and cut down the approval uh, time frame. The regulations also allow you to do a physical filing of your application directly at the Department of Immigration instead of using the digital platform. However, the regulations specifically sp uh, indicate that if you do so, if you do it physically, that they're not going to guarantee the preferential treatment that you're going to get in the digital platform. So it seems like the goal is to push everybody towards the digital platform, but uh, we will continue to monitor this in practice and see how it all develops in the coming weeks. Well, the good news is that the regulations are finally here. I know many of you have written to me and uh, also posted comments asking when these regulations would be approved, so they're here. Um, it took a while, but at least it shows also that the current government is committed to the uh, program because it could have delayed or avoided these uh, the implementation altogether. So all in all, that's positive news as well. As always, I hope you find the information helpful and I will continue to monitor the implementation of these regulations and come back to you with any additional information as these regulations are put into practice in the coming weeks. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.